and welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories, Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio is Susan Manning, CEO of DocuXL. DocuXL is a business located here in the Philadelphia area, and Susan is going to tell you more about her business and her fascinating and significant journey into being a leader of one of Philadelphia's growing organizations. Susan, welcome to Significant TV. Good morning, Fran, and thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here today. It is an honor for me. I'm, I'm excited. We met several years ago, and it's really interesting how networking turns into, in some ways, net worthing, where we get to understand each other just a little bit better and share our stories. Yes, and that, that was uh, wonderful knowing you uh, many years ago and then uh, parlaying it to where we are at today. Right, right. So as stories often go, they have a beginning. And on the show, I like to focus on what were the elements that brought the business owner that's sitting in that seat to entrepreneurship? And you've got some pretty significant milestones along the way. Take us back to sort of your earlier journeys in entrepreneurship. Yes, actually, Fran, ironically enough, it started when I was 10 years old and I had recruited two friends of mine to join me in providing a summer camp activity in our neighborhood. Of course, we charged our clients for that back then and I actually was able to influence one of the friends to host it at her house. So that's really what started unofficially uh, my path in entrepreneurship. And then uh, during my teenage years, I was able to get a non-paid internship with a Fortune 500 company. And that's really where my love of business was born. But my true pivotal and significant path to entrepreneurship occurred when I was 23. And my dad had a very small family business. He invited me in at that point and said, I need help, my partner's retiring, I was working for a global payroll company at the time, and I never envisioned working in the small family business. But we agreed to give it six months and help each other out, and that's really what the springboard was into entrepreneurship. I helped to grow that business, acquire that business, and really had the opportunity to grow it, which was a wonderful thing, uh, with guidance from my dad, and of course, challenging my dad to grow quickly. I hear that often, and the family business dynamics are very interesting. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs who are saying, wait a minute, dad or mom still wants to be in charge, but they don't know how to use the computer. They still want to be in charge, but they're not trusting that we should have other vendors. And so that being able to influence, as you did at age 10, um, and to being able to see the bigger picture and think about the global influences and innovate in a company is a skill set. How did you do that with your dad? That was interesting because I remember when I brought to him our first supplier that we needed to make a substantial financial commitment to and talking it out, this was an innovative product, state-of-the-art technology at the time. And I was able to influence him and show him really what great was going to look like down the line by picking up that product line. Um, he did have trust in me at that point and we made that decision and it was significant in the business results. So in the business that you have now, I just gave a really broad definition of your business. And I know on the screen, we have an opportunity to see the inside cover of one of your brochures and then some images of your website. But share with the audience, what is the business that you do and why does it make a difference for the customers that you serve? The business uh, that we provide, DocuXL, is a national provider of business support services in a very niche area which is centralized print, mailroom operations, shipping and receiving, AV, and records management. So we allow our clients to focus on their core business while we provide the subject matter expertise to initiate increased productivity, reduce business costs, and provide innovation in a continuous format 
a process improvement? Well, those sound like results that any business needs. You focus in very specific areas. So do your customers tend to be in specific industries or any industry? We do have several vertical markets, which include the life sciences, healthcare industry, manufacturing, education, and legal primarily. And because of such diversity, I imagine that your team and the people that are behind providing all these services are really important. How do you go about choosing those people and how do you create teams to essentially service other businesses? Fran, I always make sure that I focus in on the people part of our business. So as I interact on a daily basis with people, no matter what role that may be in, I make mental notes on keeping them in the recruiting pipeline. Identifying their unique abilities is really very special and near to, and dear to my heart because I like to bring a diverse skill set to our team. And I feel that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts when we are executing for our clients. I noticed in your logo the X is really big, DocuXL. Tell me a little bit about why that emphasis and how that relates to your company vision and mission and core beliefs. It's really, um, the, the X represents our branding. The, it's actually the DX with the large X because we like to excel and we do execute on everything that we do. We know that we have to provide specific business results and everybody has to be all in on the X in order to do that. Mm -hmm. And in your logo, you talk about people and process. Again, share with me how that connects to your beliefs because that's not every logo and not every tagline incorporates the values of a business. Being people focused really is what we're all about. It's the team members, it's the client, it's being active in the community, being interconnected with people as a whole is integral to our mission. And then empowering people to be process driven, to give them that empowerment that they are able to do things in their specific skill sets that are far better than what I can do in my skill set. So I imagine you have some stories. Our, one of our previous guests really writes books about the stories of great leaders, great women leaders. When you reflect back in leading your company, what are some stories of employee excellence that really stand out to you as being representative, again, of the company that you desire to create and the company that you now have? I have great success stories along those lines, but specifically was identifying someone that was in a position that was far capable of doing more. So really identifying her unique ability, giving her the opportunity to develop, to be promoted, and to now be on our leadership team. That's important. Do you see that happening in other women-owned businesses or non-women-owned businesses? It really depends on the business. Again, we're people-focused, so we are all about providing A, jobs, B, job training, and C, career path. So we are very focused on that. Before we go outside uh, for a position, we will look internally to see if we can source and move somebody along on career path. But women businesses as a whole are exploding and the results are amazing. We bank the third party certifier, largest third party certifier, in this region alone, PA, Delaware, Southern New Jersey, has 1,200 certified women owned businesses. Those businesses employ 40,000 employees and contribute eight billion to the economy. So you are part of a much larger driving economic force in this region. Yes. You've received some awards related to that. Talk a little bit about that and again, the impact that that has on your company and your clients. Yes, in 2015, we were awarded uh, as one of the 50th fastest growing companies in the Philadelphia marketplace. 
And the impact of that award was really, it was a company award, so we celebrated that growth. It gave validity to our clients to let them know that we are great at what we do and that we are continuing to grow and we are looking for a sus sustainable business model in order to do that. So what's your lesson for entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs, men entrepreneurs, who are at a point in their business where they want to scale, um, they want to be able to hit some of those lists? What's your advice? My advice is to go for it. Um, we can't keep fear holding us back and all the what ifs. If there's opportunity there, and I call them the little golden nuggets that sometimes we step over in the path of life, uh, seize those because they can lead to bigger and greater things. Have the confidence to know that you can execute and you can do it, and that you can assemble a team that will support the company in seeing its business results. So the solo entrepreneurship may be a thing of the past. Definitely, yes. We're, we're much more in a collaborative work environment. Our company in particular at DocuXL is a flat organization and everyone in our organization is just as important as the next, from the person delivering the mail to the CEO. And sometimes the person delivering the mail, not sometimes, always, is more important because they are client-facing client and delivering the results. Your tagline, again, is connected to what you believe in. Where in your life, before you had your business, did the elements of people and process come to play? I think the people end of it has always been in my being. Um, that, that's kind of behind my purpose in life is making a difference for others, and in this case our associates, our clients, and, and our community. At the intersection of process, that's really where synergy happens and where business results expand significantly and develop. And empowering those people to be responsible for the process-driven end of the business really is what synergy is all about. As we close and we have about 30 seconds or so. Imagine Philadelphia 20 years from now. Where will DocuXL be in that environmental, you know, entrepreneurial ecosystem? Where would you like to be? I can tell you that we are headquarters in Philadelphia, in the Philadelphia Metropolitan Marketplace. We are national in scope, and down the line, we will be global in scope. So we will always be supportive of the regional development as well as national and global and plan to keep headquarters here in Philadelphia through the foreseeable future. Susan, thank you for your time. I love your energy. What you're doing is significant. I appreciate that you use that word many <laughs> times. And it's really fascinating how the words that we share create worlds of possibilities and docu excel going that extra mile and with employees that are committed to excellent service. It's, it's all in the wording and it's all in the execution. So thank you. Thank you, Fran. And so here's another example of significant stories, significant entrepreneurs, and significant business results. Susan Manning, CEO of DocuXL, has given us a reason to see the intersection of people and process, as well as excellence. I'm Fran McNeil, host of Significant TV. Join us and continue to join us as we follow significant entrepreneurs.